So my name is Ian Emsley. I work at the Oxley Research Centre on various projects. And one of the things that we kind of do more unofficially than officially is occasionally run hacks and hackathons around the, um, with, di with different departments, different people, and different technical abilities because basically we're interested, we want to make things, and we're just interested in seeing what you can do getting people together to do this. And hacks seem one of the best ways, ways of doing this. So what kind of things have we been doing? So taking very much the, the, the idea from the open community, there are for us two ways of doing hacks. There's either the doing hack, in which we sit, sit here and try and build up build up teams of tech, technical, non-technical, <coughs> or to be a technical team to actually build things. And we've done this with libraries data, in which we ended up writing our system to help integrate Chinese Chinese data systems with the RDF. <coughs> Texts with Brodin Library um, mining, uh, basically mining the open source TCP depot for early to put online data sets. And we ran an open data day a few years ago, just try, which was a bit of an experiment. It was the second one that we ran in Oxford. And it was, we ended up doing the flood data and having the idea of actually trying to bridge not only academic communities, but it's just been communities and academic and industry, and just academic and hackers who want to make. The next thing we're about to do is one in sound, and how we, how we turn sound, data into sound, sound into data. Again, that's a bit, so we're in the press of launching out the body library. Again, we want to look at how we go between departments, how we go outside industry. But there's also thinking. So, there are, so we, although I'm a software engineer, so I like I like coding. I, I like doing. I like Python. But that's not for everybody. You know, we, we have to, I think, acknowledge and, and try and bring um, colleagues like curators who know data really well. Who've got idea, who've got ideas, and maybe have ideas they want to flesh out. So all the things we did with the Bodleian libraries hack about a year ago was as well as having the actual hack day itself, we ran an ideas hack. And the idea was you submit an ID, flesh it out. That was eventually judged and we put all the um, ideas up and wanting to sort of put those up and then if we top three we were given prizes. But it was how to it was trying to address the idea of how do we get curious together, how do we encourage people to who are more technical to say, I've got an idea and can see how it flies and see what you can do with it. Whether whether it works or not. And the idea the idea isn't a physical prototype, it's just a, effectively a model or a mental prototype. <clears throat> so how do we measure these? Well, we've always had a slight problem with this because the nature of what we do, it's very informal, it's very unstructured, and it tends to be very last minute. Which doesn't help us. So we can try so we join on technical hacks to um, in GitHub or whichever version of the general system that they particularly use. So we can actually see what is actually built on that. We've built our own user our own websites using any free service we can basically get hold of to build up domains so we can actually link to those controls so there is something that actually goes on afterwards. We can look at whether there's any activity that happens, say, within GitHub or anybody takes the idea on. If we do that, we also, we're also trying to link out to the data as well, so everything is completely open. We can't always measure how people are interacting with it because we don't necessarily own the data itself. We don't see one side of it. We don't have we don't have access to server logs or access logs. Another thing we've been trying to do is follow on events. So we did run the Stacks Unbound conference uh, hack here about four months later, we then ran it in Cambridge. Picked it up, picked the idea up on social media, and came to University Library, ran with it in medieval manuscripts. Um, I think that's taken on my colleagues in the Open Knowledge Foundation. Uh, and that caused um, the link to the social media actually for us there by using the hashtag helped us a get people to tweet in the, in the same kind of ways you can track roughly what they're doing, whether they're tweeting beforehand or they're tweeting afterwards as well as during the day, 
from the new story by Chachi Kalei, by curators and students afterwards as well. So we can see what pattern is we can find later, because obviously Trump search Twitter data a year later, we all really mm -hmm. it's going to be a little iffy and dicey. Um, but it also meant that we could have a virtual pack as well, so you don't have to physically be in the same place. Um, which is not something that we've really achieved here, but I've been uh, working with David Data Hack about five years ago, and that was basically the next number of cities across the world actually linking on Twitter and people coming in or just on social media who weren't part of any of those groups just saying, I just want to hack on that. Well, that looks really cool. So we're trying to get, so we, yeah, we, we have been looking at how we do that measurement. The current thing we're doing now is we slightly more centralised, actually trying to put almost like an art, trying to use archiving so we can basically grab, our, grab any artifacts that have been created, made, and put together, and put them in, in an accessible way so that they have at least a home. We can at least track them, or we can encourage anybody else following on to engage with those artifacts as well. And we've got um, a follow-up event conference that we're also organising to build upon the next hack. So for us, that's kind of the best way that we're seeing how to get that engagement. I don't know whether this, this follow-on will work or not, we've never tried it. I think that there possibly is a better way, but we don't necessarily know what it is. Um, maybe that, from, our point, from my point of view, I'm very much limited by current experience, current practice, and it would be really interesting to get some ideas about how we actually look at it sideways, how can we think about how to keep, keep the engagement going, and how we keep and how how we keep any momentum going as well. But as we have come up with some interesting ideas that have been a lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of people have had a great time and really engaged with also the organisations that run as well. So, so we haven't been able to do purely on our own, we've actually had organisations support as well as the Bobby and I have been very, uh, very supportive. Um, fortunately, OERC donated time and room for us the other day today. So, and other people have donated data to us. So that's the other way we're looking at how do we get that impact. Do we get more data, do we get less data? So the Cambridge University Library basically donates some data to us as well. Something that I think may be a way of measuring, I'm not, but I'm not very, very much not sure, of the <coughs> tools. So, Rachel, thank you very much. So the data that we had was the only English books online, which is a collection of something like 65,000 different texts, which was completely open source under CC0. And it was how do we use, how do we even get, get students to engage with those ideas? So the winning, the winning idea was try to do a map based, uh, an interactive map based on the text of John Hacklett's voyage across America in 17th, uh, John Hacklett's travels in the 17th century. So it was how do, how do we it was a group of students basically conceptualised what they wanted to do define, and wrote out in you know, uh, about 500 words what they would actually want to do with this and how they took to support it. So you have a set of data yeah. and you kind of challenge the people to yeah. come up with ideas of what to mm -hmm. do with this data. Yeah, or how do they, or how do they want to mix it in a they set to enrich it or to support what they're, support what they're doing. The end, um, so the, the, the top three, um, the, all the end ideas are actually all published to engage, you know, uh, yeah, it was to try and get, engage um, and make it more technical, because this shouldn't just be technical. Yeah. The process of hacking it should be. The question is, like, how do you get non-technical people to submit ideas to your slightly more technical-oriented? That's the one reason why we kept it very separate from, so the ideas hack was separate from the main hack itself. So it was presented separately, but it actually ran in tandem. So it ran 
if I remember rightly. So it was almost like a competition. So the way a price for everything would be published. And the prices were huge. Yeah, it was a mixed Yeah, to, to encourage um, participation, really. And the other way of doing it is Now we're much more looking at, so we have, an, so we have an idea, we have a prototype, work, how do we actually then use it? Because it's great to spend six hours building something, but then if you don't use it, what have we ever really achieved? Well, we, it may be something that you say actually it is a prototype to be thrown, off, to be thrown away, and that's that's the, that's the fine, because we're looking to see what can you do with data to the process, Concept. And the reason why we've been looking at following events is actually how we keep building, how we keep this going, how we keep things, pieces of software, to continue hacking on those pieces of software. But I think it does define on what you want as your original process. It may be I actually just don't want to hack on something just for about six or seven hours. And at that point, you may not have something that you take on. Part of it has also been. Say to look at productivity for, the, for people who actually donate us room, um, pizza, time, and data. Say this is what the kind of stuff that we did. There, there is a, actually an outcome from this rather than having a really good day and you've got a nice little logo on our website. So that it's kind of trying to give back as well, you know, even if we are doing something. Um, for whatever, I think there's also trade. 